every gosh darn year, man, there's something that goes on with the Arizona Coyotes that is just so bad. And I get it, you know, there are a lot of Coyotes fans that I have seen that not necessarily upset with the reporting of these bad stories itself. Like, obviously, if bad things go on in the NHL, it's up to us to talk about it, right? It's just, for the Arizona Coyotes, I've seen a lot of people going out there saying, man, they never cover this team when they're good. They never talk about the good things about this team. They only all pile on on us every time something bad happens. And I get it. There's the empath in me that does kind of feel bad for harping on you guys all the time. But just note, it's not you, the fans, that we're getting ticked off about. It's your hockey team and the weird stuff that they do every single gosh darn year. From the illegal testing of prospects, which led to Cheka getting fired, and the removal of your draft picks to drafting guys that really didn't deserve to be drafted, that you ended up rescinding afterwards, to the thing with the arena staff not paying your workers like Arizona in the school that is the NHL they're the weird kid Arizona is the kid that's always going out there doing something to get him in trouble getting him sent down to the principal's office there's some weird thing that they do maybe once a week maybe once every two weeks or whatever I'm dramatizing it because the coyotes have some big thing happen every year that just kind of gets the entire spotlight thrown onto them in a negative way. And this was even worse, either because this one was due to pure negligence, or it's due to the idea that they think we can believe that it's negligence. I'm not really too sure what is worse. So, the Arizona Coyotes the other day was reported by Katie Strang that the Coyotes might actually be locked out of their arena by the city of Glendale itself for unpaid arena charges and delinquent tax bills. This story kind of went viral a few days ago. Oh my god, the Coyotes didn't pay their taxes? And because of that, they might be locked out of their own gosh darn arena? How the heck does an NHL franchise get to a point where they might be locked out of their arena for not paying taxes, dude? I know there was the entire, oh, we're gonna build a new arena in, like, Tempe or wherever it is, but that's not even, like, there yet. That's not a finalized thing. That's not an arena that's, like, built yet. So you're still there in Glendale, dude. You still have this commitment to the city of Glendale and everything you have to do there, but you're not paying your taxes? Are you kidding me? So this story was a pretty big deal. And it was also confirmed by Craig Morgan on Twitter here. I have just confirmed the same news. The Coyotes have until 5 p.m. on December 20th to pay the outstanding arena invoices and taxes from 2020-2021. This is from last season. If they don't do that, they will be locked out of Gila River Arena. Now, I don't know if it's actually Gila or Gila, but uh, I haven't really had to say that arena name in the entire time they've been there. So, yeah, I feel like that's kind of my bad. But either way, this was the status quo of a few days ago, where the Coyotes had these outstanding taxes from last season that they did not pay. Here's what the Coyotes had to say after the article was initially released a few days ago. We have already launched an investigation to determine how this could have happened, and initial indications are that it appears to be the result of an unfortunate human error. Regardless, we deeply regret the inconvenience this has caused, and we will make sure that by tomorrow morning, the Arizona Coyotes are current on all of our bills and owe no state or local taxes whatsoever, and we will take immediate steps to ensure that nothing like this can ever possibly happen again. Arizona, dude. Fire your accountant. That guy certainly is not doing his job properly, man. 1.4 million dollars! So, yesterday, the Coyotes ended up straight up paying it. They wired $1.4 million to the State of Arizona Department of Revenue for these taxes, and they paid it. Okay, cool. They did it. Why, in the first place, was this not paid? That's the thing that everybody is wanting to know. Was it really a human error kind of thing to misplace $1.4 million and only have this get brought up to the surface and get it paid off when somebody in the media goes out there and is like, hey, you guys didn't pay this? Citing human error and saying that this entire thing is, oh, it's a mistake that we made, whatever, whatever. Honestly, it would be a lot easier to give the benefit of the doubt and just say, okay, well, it is a human error, you know, sometimes these things can happen. We saw this happen with, like, Citibank a few years ago. It was like $500 million or something like that. But the thing with the Coyotes is, when it comes to their money issues, I mean, they had problems paying their arena staff within the past year and a half, didn't they? 
am I misremembering that where they had money problems, not only with the taxes and the people who own the arena in the city of Glendale this season, but the people who work for them as well before, right? That happened. Here's the article from May 6, 2020. The Coyotes say they provided money to their arena to pay hourly staff, but those staff members had not been paid. And then you had the other thing where the players and the Coyotes were not getting their bonus money on time. Like, this team is a financial mess. And you'll wonder why the city of Glendale terminated the Arizona Coyotes contract with the arena after like 2022 or whenever it was. I forgot. Sorry, that's my bad. Now, you go over to what Gary Bettman said today, and things get a little bit funnier, because he says that it's clear the city of Glendale has an edge or an agenda in terms of how they're dealing with the Arizona Coyotes. And, you know, I mean, Gary, the Coyotes needed to pay $1.4 million. Like, I get it. Sometimes if you're at the top of the food chain, you've got billions of dollars at your disposal. It might be easy to sort of lose sight as to how important that kind of stuff is, but yeah, the Coyotes had a million bucks that they needed to pay, so I don't really see if this is really warranted, this kind of comment here. Oh, they've got an agenda against the Coyotes. Like, that's pretty aggressive, I think. And why exactly was this brought up for Batman? Well, it was indeed mentioned elsewhere in other parts of hockey media as to if the Arizona Coyotes were to move, where exactly would things go? Because it's obvious that in Glendale, things aren't really going all too well right now. Friedman on the Jeff Merrick Show talked about this yesterday. We should all have some fight for us as much as Gary Bettman has fought for Arizona. He is committed to the market as anybody can be. I think what people are worrying about is that it's starting to make everyone look bad, and that's the concern about this. It's not just an issue of that the Coyotes owe $1.3 million to the state and local city government. It's that, apparently, what they're prepared to say is if you want back into the arena after the deadline on December 20th, you have to be willing to guarantee us that we're still going to be owed from now until the rest of the season, so I don't think it's going to be as simple as, okay, we'll catch up and pay this bill we owe. I think there's also the question of are they going to be forced to guarantee the tax money or prepay the tax money from now until the end of the season. So, long story short, there's uncertainty as to whether or not the Coyotes are going to be able to pay from now until the end of this season, because last season it took them this long to pay already. There also was the entire conversation he had about possible destinations if the Coyotes were forced to move. To me, the question about Quebec City is this. Number one, will it have a negative effect on the business of the Montreal Canadiens? Right now, the Canadiens are the team in that province, obviously. I'm curious to know, what are the internal beliefs about if you put another team in the province? Is there enough for both of them to just not survive, but thrive? And that's a question I have. The second thing is, now you're unbalancing the league. How do you solve that problem? Going over onto other teams, he says, I think Kansas City is a possibility, but the league has to be looking hard at Houston. It's the biggest market in North America, not counting Mexico City, that does not have an NHL team. It's a big market, it keeps the West and East currently aligned, and it also gives Dallas a big in-state market, and I think that would really appeal to the league. Friedman did discuss how the Houston Rockets owner team, yeah, 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 we don't care about this stuff. We're talking about Arizona. So, Gary Bettman also did say here that the Coyotes are not going anywhere. And then he also followed it up by saying they're going to play somewhere else in Arizona as well. Obviously, the Tempe Arena is one that had been discussed too. Pierre Lebrun had a few things to say about that, saying that it looks beautiful and the plans look great. But the thing is, that's not going to open until at the earliest, like four years from now. They still need to build it. So this is all about what do the Coyotes do and where do they play between now and four years from now? Can they keep playing in Glendale and figure that out with a city of Glendale? Or do they have to play at ASU, a much smaller venue? The options are not great. Finally, this is Katie Strang, the one who started this all with the article at the beginning, coming back with another piece of information. She reached out to the city of Glendale manager Kevin Phelps for comment on Gary Bettman's comments that Glendale had an agenda against the Coyotes. This is Kevin Phelps' response. If Mr. Bettman and others want to believe that not filing 17 monthly tax returns was due to human error, then so be it. 17 monthly tax returns? That goes back over a year, dude! How do you not file that stuff? Seriously, just fire your accountant right now. 
As a reminder, this was the same excuse the team used when they failed to pay some of their employees in a timely manner. Glendale does not have an agenda. We just want assurances that the team pay all of their obligations to the city in a timely manner. Our approach is based on actual experiences with the team. Perhaps the league will be willing to guarantee that the city is fully paid by June 30th, 2022. I should note that, Katie says, prior to publication Wednesday evening, I did ask the league if they were willing to guarantee any future liabilities for the Coyotes, and they did not respond. So, talk to me in the comments what do you think about the Arizona Coyotes. This is a mess, dude. This team is so financially unstable, and it kind of blows my mind that somebody or an organization, I guess, at the top of the world. You're playing in the NHL. You are among the 32 best organizations in the world when it comes to hockey teams. And, like, you can't do basic accounting? 17 months! Okay, I'm, I'm done. Talk to me in the comments. What do you think? I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye. <laughs>